Uh-oh, you know how the old saying goes though, you can't keep a good cosmic horror down, especially when that cosmic horror rears its ugly head from the very fabric of time and space to rain down the eldritch terrors and incomprehensible machinations of an entity that we are incapable of understanding just for the sake of it. The thing is, well, the thing, the 1982 John Carpenter cosmic horror extravaganza that found its way to our number one spot on the previous part of this top five scary series, and given that the thing is one of the finest movies ever made, it makes things pretty difficult when when picking up the pages of Cosmic Horror, but I think that there are a few waiting in the wings, so let's take a look, shall we? Hello horror fans, what's going on, and once again welcome back to the Scary Channel on YouTube, top 5 scary videos. As per usual, I'll be your horror host Jack Finch, as today we curiously take a look at the top 5 scariest Cosmic Horror movies, part 2. Roll the clip. You're hallucinating. He's here, now, listening, watching. Watching. For the curious amongst you, that clip was from 2014's Canadian indie horror thriller Black Mountain Side, a movie which has been mentioned before here and certainly deserves to be recommended once more, especially when we're talking about cosmic horror. Although it's by no means perfect, it's actually one of the most convincing examples of a filmmaker taking a pop at my personal favourite Lovecraftian story of all time at the Mountains of Madness. If you're feeling some cosmic horror out in the Arctic, not the Antarctic, but whatever, then certainly take a look at this movie and consider it today's most honourable of mentions. Let's begin. Kicking off at number five, The Endless 2017. And first and foremost, I absolutely adore this movie. You see, it's been quite a while since we've spoken about The Endless, and I hope that the first time around, for those of you that were here back then, you had reason to check this remarkable movie out. After all, we're all stuck in a quantum loop of sorts, and time is but a prison. The thing is, it has often been said that there are a few components to The Endless that need to be experienced first before fully appreciating this movie, those being 2012's Resolution and 2014's Spring. And whilst I certainly kind of agree, I won't let that bog you down too much, because on several viewings, The Endless, in my opinion, is very close to being a standalone masterpiece. You see, Justin Benson and Aaron Moorhead, the two filmmakers behind 2017's The Endless, as well as the aforementioned movies, can't help but create cosmic horror. Their work drips with the very life essence of what makes cosmic horror tick, and that's exactly what makes this movie so accessible, because it's in the finer details of The Endless where the true existential dread lies. Created by Justin Benson and Aaron Moorhead, who also star in this movie as happenstance brothers Justin and Aaron, the endless tells the tale of the two siblings in question who receive a mysterious video cassette in the mail sent to them by Camp Arcadia, a sort of commune out in the countryside that they belong to as young adults. You see, the two brothers are split on just exactly what happened to them in their young adulthood. Justin remembers Camp Arcadia being a bizarre UFO death cult that they escaped the terrifying clutches of, and yet Aaron remembers them as a warm, fuzzy, completely harmless, friendly commune that they spent some good times with. Either way, whatever the truth of the matter, curiosity gets the better of them and proceeds to proverbially kill the cat, and the two brothers then decide to return to Camp Arcadia just for a single day to see what all the fuss was about. Yeah, and that's all I'll say, because that's all the framing that you need for this brilliant movie. The Endless is proof that cosmic horror needs only a simple premise to be effective, because as I said before, the culmination of existential fear lies in the finer details of things. Check it out. Swinging in at number four, The Mist, 2007. Oh no, Norm, poor guy. Believe me, that's not the worst of it though, because the beauty of this movie is that no matter the hordes of cosmic horror that may be lurking outside in the mist, sometimes the most horrifying of monsters can often be found lingering within the human heart. I mean, kind of anyway, because those tentacular behemoths, although only briefly glimpsed, are certainly the definition of todash darkness and cosmic horror dread. Tentacles, guys. It's pretty straightforward. The point is, 2007's The Mist has often been brushed away or overlooked when it comes to cosmic horror, but I think in many ways this was one of Stephen King's most cosmically horrifying of novellas. You see, it's no guessing that King is a huge fan of Lovecraft, and his admiration for cosmic horror has played a key theme in his myriad of works, but when Project Arrowhead gets whirring away in an effort to summon the darkness of the void here on Earth, yeah. This is exactly the result, and what do you expect when you go poking about with the fabric of time and space? <sighs> Not again. 
Written and directed by Frank Darabont, who is perhaps the rare breed of filmmaker who has actually managed to do justice to Stephen King's prose. Of course, 2007's The Mist is based on King's 1980 novella of the same name. And although Darabont's interpretation certainly does justice to the narrative, it also features an entirely iconic and original ending that made even Stephen King shudder, but we don't want to spoil that now, do we? It tells a tale of David Drayton, played by the absolutely brilliant Thomas Jane, as he and his eight year old son Billy head to the local supermarket market to pick up some supplies. Little do they know but their small town of Bridgeton, Maine has actually been the site of a series of government operations that has led to a bizarre all consuming mist that descends around the town. Oh and within that mist come a whole host of tentacular monsters again. Also Mrs Carmody everybody and we all know that she's just the worst. The point is if you haven't experienced this remarkable adaptation then you certainly should. The mist is the best kind of cosmic horror in its straightforwardness and I do think I'll never truly recover from that ending. Next up at number three, The Cabin in the Woods, 2012. Uh, I have the Harbinger on line two. Oh, Christ. Uh, can you take a message? Uh, I don't think so. He's really pushy. The Harbinger's on line two. Now that's a call you should never miss. Truth be told, on first viewing, that should have really been a warning sign. But hey, Joss Whedon manages to craft such a breakneck cosmic horror ride in 2012's The Cabin in the Woods that you might not ever truly understand what you're watching until it's too late. At first viewing, I kind of thought that this movie was a little too smart for its own good. And the true extent of its brilliance took quite a while for me to fully appreciate its cosmic horror and seep its unassuming tentacles into my mind. But hey, I suppose that's the most efficient method to deliver existential dread and you may be sensing a theme in this particular series. Hint, it's existential dread. Also before we get into the bulk of this movie I just want to highlight one particular guy, Richard Jenkins, who whilst he only has a minor role in the cabin in the woods as Gary Citizen, one of the engineers behind the titular cabin, he's just brilliant man. He plays some of the funnest roles in cinema. He's Robert Doback in Step Brothers, Giles in The Shape of Water, Chicory in Bone Tomahawk. <sighs> yeah, he's great. Sign note over. Written and directed by Drew Goddard in his first ever movie since writing for Buffy, The Cabin in the Woods walks arm in arm with its other creator, Joss Whedon, who oversaw the process in all of his creative production brilliance as an outsider looking in with the intention of redefining slasher cinema from the clutches of the stark oversaturation of the torture porn genre. Now that's a sentence. It tells the tale of a group of college students, Dana, Holden, Marty, Jules and Kurt, who take a trip to a cabin in the woods for the weekend and in classic fashion find themselves at the behest of all manners of monsters of horror. You see, whilst this film may seem entirely straightforward, that's exactly where it wants you to be and soon enough the veil is pulled back in a truly brilliant manner. I don't want to spoil anything but the fact that this movie finds itself on this list may be a little telling because it takes a while to figure out the cosmic horror behind this very evident cosmic horror movie and yes, whilst it would take the entirety of this movie for you to fully realise the extent of that cosmic horror, the final moments are kind of eye opening. This is also one of the finest horror movies of the 2010s, so yeah, there's also that too. Coming in at number 2, Event Horizon, 1997. Okay, you guys saw this one coming, right? I mean, whilst this remarkably underrated movie also managed to find its way onto the first part of our list as its honourable mention, now that we've got space for a part two, it's only right that we give it fair list service. And talking of space, this is also perhaps the only movie that manages to go to the titular void in its pursuit of discovering the cosmic horror behind the horror. Also talking of space travel and before we talk about the many injustices that have befallen this movie, the fact that Event Horizon is so underrated as a horror movie is one thing but it's also underrated as a straight up science fiction success because the physics behind this movie are remarkably sound. A black hole wormhole as a means for instantaneous space travel. Yeah, now we're thinking with pause guys. However the events of this movie will certainly make you think twice about the true extent of that so yeah be careful what you wish for really. Written by Philip Eisner and directed by Paul W.S. Anderson, a director who historically has certainly been more missed than hit and which may also form part of the reason that Event Horizon is often so overlooked. That's just not the only reason that you should check it out. This film is horrific man on an existential level. Set in 2047 Event Horizon tells a tale of a rescue vessel Lewis and Clark that is dispatched to an area of Proxima Centauri to recover a long lost vessel, the Event Horizon that disappeared during its maiden voyage and had been considered lost for over seven years before the brave crew of the Lewis and Clark decided to 
do something about it. Its crew, Captain Miller, played by the brilliant Lawrence Fishbourne, alongside Lieutenant Stark, Pilot Smith, Medical Technician Peters, Engineer Ensign Justin, Dr. DJ, Rescue Technician Cooper, and of course, Dr. William Weir, played by Sam Neill himself, the genius architect behind the Event Horizon's pioneering spacefaring technology. You see, Dr. Weir has a personal interest in rescuing his long lost ship, as he was the one who designed the ship's experimental gravity drive, which in turn generates an artificial black hole that then bridges two points in space time for instantaneous travel across astronomical distances. Sounds too good to be true? Well, yeah, I'll say no more. The performances of the film are fantastic. Sean Pertwee, Jason Isaacs, Kathleen Quinlan, Richard T. Jones, Jolie Richardson, and of course, Neil and Fishburne themselves. This movie is great. It's as cosmic horror as it comes. Give it a watch, please. And finally, coming in at the one spot, Prince of Darkness, 1987. Suppose there is a universal mind controlling everything. A God willing the behavior of every subatomic particle. Okay guys, maybe you saw this one coming, maybe you didn't, but for the astute amongst you, you'll understand that John Carpenter's Apocalypse Trilogy is now 3 for 3 on this cosmic horror list, and rightly so in my book. Yeah, The Thing pinched number 1 comfortably, and 1995's In the Mouth of Madness snipped a respectable third spot, although it probably could have punched much higher, I'll just be in, whatever. But I think the one that we left out, 1987's Prince of Darkness, rightfully deserves its placement here for an entirely different reason. Compared to the other two movies in the Apocalypse trilogy, Prince of Darkness is wholeheartedly unique, and in many senses it's one of the most unique films that John Carpenter has ever created. Yes, this movie is the definition of cosmic horror, but from an entirely different perspective. You see, this film handles religion in a manner of such cosmic significance that it turns the concept of an ape living on a pale blue dot who worships an all-powerful entity in the sky into one of the most existentially terrifying things imaginable. Now, that's not to say that this movie sets about to offend anyone, it just switches the way that we think of these things, and that is a remarkable thing for a horror director to do. Written and directed by John Carpenter, Prince of Darkness tells a tale of a mysterious priest played by the legend of horror cinema, Donald Pleasance himself, who invites a renowned physicist, Professor Howard Birak, along with his group of students to join him in the basement of a monastery belonging to the equally mysterious Brotherhood of Sleep, a supposedly ancient order who allegedly communicate with each other through their dreams. Here they are also in possession of a strange cylinder that contains a swirling green liquid that the priest believes to be sentient. What is it? Well, that's down to physics to decide. You see, the greatest function of John Carpenter's Prince of Darkness is that it manages to take the vast expansive space of cosmic horror and distill it down to a different level of existential dread. It takes the macro to the micro, and some of the themes that it covers, whilst perhaps not as obvious as some of his other movies, are some of the most challenging in cosmic horror cinema, if not horror cinema as a whole. And for that reason, it takes Andamore and spot here today. Give it a watch, because Prince of Darkness is just awesome. It really is. Well, there we have it, our top five scariest cosmic horror movies, part two. What do you guys think? Do you agree, disagree, have any more to add? Then let us know your thoughts down in the comment section below, as well as any choice picks of your own. Before we depart from today's video, though, let's first take a quick look at some of your more creative comments from part one of this cosmic horror series. King Treen says, John Carpenter's The Thing is my favorite movie of all time. Well, if I may say so, you have impeccable taste. Psycho Gaming says, What exactly do you mean by Event Horizon is the hypothetical kickstart of the Hellraiser franchise that has been going for a while before Event Horizon was even made? Well, good question, Psycho Gaming, and quite a few people seem to comment on the same matter. The key is in the term hypothetical. You see, quite a few fans of both franchises like to imagine that the warp drive in Event Horizon was the gate between these different dimensions. It's In all honesty though, it's, it's just a bit of fun. Warhammer 40k also gets brought into the picture too. People figure it would be fun to imagine that Event Horizon kickstarted the warp and also the hell space dimension of Hellraiser. We've got too much time on our hands, really. Yeah, I didn't, sorry, dead. whatever. Do with that information as you want. <laughs> well, on that note, unfortunately, that's all we've got time for in today's video. Just stick around all the way until the end. If you were a fan of this video, or just top five scary videos in general, then please be a dear and hit that thumbs up button, as well as that subscribe bell, and I'll be seeing you in the next one. As per usual, I've been your horror host, Jack Finch. You've been watching top five scary videos, and until next time, you take it easy.